we are going to discuss a new topic in mechanics of fluid that is stokes law stokes law is about a force which acts on a body which is falling through a or moving through a fluid consider the picture this is the ball that is moving from top to down or it is falling it's the falling body now we can say that this is a streamline this is a streamline of air which is in the upward direction but the body is falling down that is when a body falls through a fluid it drags the layer of the fluid in contact with it it drags some layer of the fluid which is in contact with it the relative motion between the different layers of the fluid is set and as a result the body experiences a retarding force the body experiences a retarding force because of the because of the relative motion of the layers of liquid or fluid that is if the body is falling under gravity because of the drag it experiences a, an upward force it experiences an upward force or drag force that is it retards it retards the motion of the body for example falling of a raindrop or swinging of a pendulum are examples of objects falling through a fluid and the drain drop experiences an upward force or retarding force also the pendulum bob experiences or retards uh, after some times now we are going to express expression for the force this this is the viscous force this this force is called viscous force that is viscous force f it is directly proportional to velocity of the object or the body and it is in opposite to the uh, it is opposite to the direction of motion and is proportional to viscosity of the fluid it is proportional to radius of the sphere okay now we are going to combine this we get f is equal to the proportionality constant 6 pi is introduced then we can say that it is equal to 6 pi eta ab where eta is the viscosity then a is the radius and velocity is the v it is proposed by the scientist called sir george g stokes he is an english scientist enunciated clearly the viscous drag force f that is stokes law is given as f is equal to 6 pi eta av this is a stokes law it, it, we need not to derive this it's a simple formula this law is an interesting example for retarding force which is proportional to velocity it is proportional to velocity that is when the velocity of the object increases the retarding force also increases we can study its consequences on the object falling through a viscous medium this this law can be used to, to study the motion of objects falling through viscous medium let us consider an liquid drop or rain drop then as the velocity of the rain drop increases the retarding force also increases that is we know that g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square that is we can say that in each second there is an increase in acceleration of about 9.8 meter per second square it is kilometers it is so many kilometers high 
in each second if the acceleration increases 9.8 times when the raindrop reach down the ground it will have a tremendous force it is like a bullet it is capture the velocity of a bullet but it will not happen because the raindrop is moving through the vis viscous fluid that is air because then velocity increases also dragging force increases that is why it retards the downward motion and thereby the acceleration decreases finally when the viscous force plus buoyant force becomes equal to the force due to gravity that is the force due to gravity and force due to viscous force or dragging force will be equal and opposite after some time and there will be no acceleration and it is this having a constant velocity and it is having a constant velocity thus in equilibrium this terminal velocity is given by terminal velocity this velocity is called terminal velocity can be derived as that then we know that at equilibrium at equilibrium the dragging force will be equal to the gravitational force that is dragging force is the 6 pi eta a b t at equilibrium the v will become terminal velocity and we know that f is equal f g is equal to m m a or m g that is mass is the we know that density is equal to mass by volume mass is equal to density into volume that is density vol that is volume into density into g that is volume of a sphere that is 4 by 3 pi a cube here the sphere is having or the air or the raindrop is having a radius a and we are having the uh, relative different the net uh, density is the uh, rho minus sigma into g where rho is the mass density of sphere mass density of sphere and sigma is the mass density of fluid of fluid that is we can say that fg is equal to 4 by 3 pi a cube rho minus sigma g this equation becomes 4 pi by 3 a cube rho minus sigma g then cancelling this and this also we get e6 eta vt is equal to 4 by 3 a rho minus sigma g then vt is equal to 4 by 3 and 6 eta a a square a square rho minus sigma g which is equal to uh, 2 by 3 that is 2 by 9 a square rho minus sigma g and eta that is it is the terminal velocity that is terminal velocity is the velocity at which the dragging force will be equal to the gravitational force that it is depend on the radius of the sphere and the density mass den difference of the mass densities of sphere and inversely proportional to the it is inversely proportional to the viscosity now we are going to discuss a new topic that is reynolds number reynolds number is a dimensionless number whose value gives whether the flow of fluid will be turbulent or 
streamline that is consider the picture in the picture a it is a streamline flow it is a streamline or laminar flow it is streamline or laminar flow that is if the object is placed in a fluid it will be the flow of fluid will be in this manner that is it is streamlined or we can say that it is in steady state then if the velocity of the fluid increases after a time the fluid will be going to crowded or curl after some time or after some time the streamline flow is turned into unsteady state it is streamline will be unsteady state or unsteady flow now look at this picture we can say that the it is completely turned into turbulent flow it is completely turned into turbulent flow that is the curls occurring is is a is the an indicator that is the curls forming white foam or or white path is an indicator of turbulent flow the reynolds number is a dimensionless number it shows whether a flow of fluid or fluid flow is in a streamlined state or turbulent state or in an unsteady state it is discovered by a scientist called osborne osborne reynolds and he observed that turbulent flow is less likely for viscous fluid flowing at low rates that is turbulent flow is less likely for viscous fluid for viscous fluid there is a small value of turbulence small turbulence that is he defined a dimensionless number reynolds number is a dimensionless number it can be given as r e is equal to rho v d divided by eta where rho is the density of the fluid rho is the density of the fluid v is the velocity of the fluid velocity of the fluid and d is the dimension of the pipe and eta is the viscosity of the liquid it is a dimensionless quantity when r e is less than 100000 it will be a streamline flow for reynolds number less than 1000 it will be the fluid will be in streamline motion then re is greater than 2000 then it will be in turbulent motion or it is in turbulent state this a turbulent motion when re is in between 1000 and 2000 then it is in non steady or it is in unsteady now we are going to see some examples of turbulent flow in our nature the flow of fluid is always in a turbulent way consider the first example the smoke rising from a burning stack of wood is an example of turbulent flow the oceanic currents that is the ocean water moving in a 
turbulent way. Also, the twinkling of stars is caused by the atmospheric turbulence. Also, the when boat boat move through water, the waves left behind is in a turbulent way. These are the some of the examples of turbulent flow in nature. Now, we are going to discuss the critical value of a Reynolds number or critical Reynolds number. We know that R E is the Reynolds number which is equal to rho V D by eta. Then for the critical value of R E, we know that it is set the turbulence. At critical value, the, the fluid is in a turbulent way. Now consider a case of two liquid. It is flowing through, that is say it like oil. This oil is passing through a pipe and the same pipe having the same dimension we are having a water in it okay we know that oil is viscous than oil is viscous than water but when it flow through the same pipe or same pipe or pipe having same dimension we can say that the Reynolds number of oil will be equal to Reynolds number of water. It is an interesting fact that is under the same condition or under the same dimension of pipe the different fluid having different densities and viscosity is having the same value of Reynolds number. It is used for Designing ships, submarines, racing cars, racing cars, aeroplanes, etc. This is a very useful concept in the turbulent flow or in fluid mechanics. The, the critical value of Reynolds number is same for some liquid that is moving under a same pipe having same same dimensions. Now we are expressing Reynolds number in an another way. For that consider the Reynolds equation Re is equal to rho V D by eta that is we know rho V and eta are the density, velocity and viscosity of the fluid respectively and D is the dimension of the pipe. Now we are multiplying the numerator with area of the pipe and again velocity of the liquid. Also we are writing area and velocity in the numerator and we are rearranging this equation we get rho v square a and we are taking the dimension of the pipe in the denominator so we get eta a v by d the numerator the term in the numerator is called inertial force it indicates the mass of moving fluid and the term in the denominator is the force of viscosity or viscous force. We can represent Re as the ratio of inertial force and the force of viscosity. Okay, it is an another representation of Reynolds number. Now we are going to discuss some disadvantages of turbulence. Turbulence causes the kinetic energy of fluid dissipates into heat. Turbulence dissipates kinetic energy of fluid into the form of heat energy. 
that is we know that when a fluid is in a steady state there is no dissipation of energy that is the energy of the liquid is in a constant way but when it is in a turbulent state the collision of the particles will increase the kinetic energy and it will lead to dissipation of energy in the form of heat it is one of the major disadvantages of turbulence of fluid we know that air and liquid are the main fluid that is we are using for transportation that is for in the case of racing cars and aeroplanes these are some of the objects that is moving very fast racing cars and aeroplanes are designed in a way to minimize the turbulence of the now we are going to discuss a new topic in the chapter mechanics of fluids that is surface tension look at the pictures given the first picture is showing a water drop a water drop can you say why water drop is in the shape of a sphere then look at the next picture is a cotton wick is burning here the cotton wick is dipped in the oil what is the reason that the oil rises in cotton wick what is the reason for the rising of oil in a cotton wick then look at the next picture lotus leaf here also water droplets are in the shape of spear what is the reason for that then the next picture the insect doesn't sink why the insect doesn't sink on the water okay these are some of the terms that we concern about the surface of a fluid mainly surface tension is arises on surface of fluid we know that fluids are having no definite shape they are having no definite shape but they can have the shape of a container the shape of the container and they are having a free surface consider this is the fluid and the shaded portion is the surface of a liquid okay we know that we consider it as a free surface free surface means it is free from extra forces or energy by the liquid only there are no additional forces in the surface of this liquid because of this the surface possesses an additional energy it possesses an additional energy this additional energy is called surface energy can you say what is the reason for the surface energy consider a molecule of liquid inside the liquid this is a liquid and consider this is one of the molecule etc we know that the molecule inside the fluid has an attractive force that that is inside the fluid the molecule experiences an equal force due to the other molecules or the other molecule is attract by equal forces by the side of by the side molecules but in the case of a molecule at the top of the surface or the top of the liquid surface it only get a partial attractive force from the other molecules because of this only it is partially attracted below the surface of the liquid the liquid surface is free from that forces because of this 
the surface of the liquid act as a stretched membrane it is having a tension called surface tension because of the attractive forces of the molecules below the surface of the liquid the sur the free surface of the liquid possesses an additional energy this energy leads to the stretchiness of the surface and this leads to the surface tension that is why the the insect doesn't sink below the water and because of this energy the water droplets is seen as spheres and because of this the cotton in a cotton wick oil rises also the water droplets are spear in shape because of the surface tension of the water now we are going to discuss the relation between surface energy and surface tension we already knew that surface energy is the additional energy possessed by a surface liquid surface is called the surface energy we are now we are going to express the additional energy or surface energy in the form of an equation for that consider the figure in the figure it is a film the shaded portion is a this is a film thin film so like soap film and it is having a length l and we are going to stretch in the figure a the film is in equilibrium that is there is no force acting in the first figure now we are going to apply an external force to stretch the film an extra distance d we are now applying an external force therefore the surface area increases we know that when surface increases that is when area increases energy also increases and so there is an internal force there is an internal force set up inside the film in order to resist the extra energy that is that energy can be de defined as the work done on the system that is work done is given by f dot d here this work done is stored as the surface energy that is surface energy can be defined as the force into distance or we can say that surface energy per unit area is the work done surface energy per unit area is the work done we are now we are going to express the extra area developed the extra area developed can be written as that is a is equal to we know that this is the length l and the extra distance is d that is l into d since the film has two surface that is so area become double that is 2l d is the extra area produced for a unit area w is equal to s yes. for since we have an area a the work can be written as s into a that is s into 2 dl that is s is equal to w by 2 dl that is f dot d divided by 2 dl cancelling this we get f by 2 l this energy 
that is s is equal to f by 2l this energy is used to stretch this energy is used to stretch the film this energy is numerically equal to the tension that tension is called surface tension that's that tension is called surface tension that is we can define surface tension as surface energy per unit area or in general we can write as surface tension which is equal to force per unit length force per unit length here it is f by 2l the 2 st stands for the two surfaces but in the case of drops or a uh, liquid uh, having a volume it is f by l since it is one surface we, uh, since thin films has two surface we placing two here that is the relation between surface tension and surface energy that is surface tension is the surface energy per unit area also surface tension is the force per unit length and it is acting in the plane of a surface and it is acting on a plane of a surface consider this is a uh, liquid surface this is the liquid and we know that this is act, the surface tension acting is in this direction that is this for this tension is used to stretch the membrane or stretch the liquid surface so it is called a stretched stretched surface the surf uh, the force or the tension which stretches the surface is called surface tension the unit of surface tension is newton per meter we are going to discuss a new topic that is angle of contact we know that liquid wets surfaces but all liquid wet do not wet all surfaces there is a reason behind that for example we know that lotus leaf in lotus leaf the water droplets are in the shape of spheres but in the case of a plastic sheet it will be more or less like this it means that in plastic the water surface is like this that is it wet it wets the plastic but in the lotus leaf it is, will be like this it do not wet the surface okay here we are going to discuss the reason behind this consider the figure here we are having a hydrophobic drop and a hydrophilic drop that is it is a case of a lotus leaf and this can be taken as a plastic sheet in this end leaf it is more or less like a drop but in the case of plastic sheet it wet the surface that is all the liquid form a curved shape on interacting with solid surfaces that is uh, that curved shape may be in the shape of a drop or in the shape of a curve like this now we are going to discuss what is angle of contact in the figure we are we can see a an angle that is theta in between the tangent between the liquid surface and the solid surface that we can say that the angle between tangent to the liquid surface at the point at the point of contact and and solid surface inside the liquid 
destabilized us angle of contact destabilized us angle of contact that is here we are having a tangent drawn at the liquid surface and the theta is the angle between the tangent and the liquid surface in the first figure it is an obtuse angle theta is obtuse theta is obtuse in the first case and theta is acute in the second figure okay then the angle of theta will determine whether the liquid wet wet a surface consider a figure this is a solid surface and it this is a liquid surface liquid then we are having this tangent this is a tangent in between the surface of liquid and air this is a tangent we can represent it as then here we can say that it is liquid solid surface that is we are having three interfacial tensions s stands for surface tension s stands for surface tension and the arrow mark indicate the direction of the surface tension there are three types of surface tension based on the interfaces that is s l a s s a and s s l are the three surface tensions acting on this figure at the line of contact that is this point that is at the line of contact the three surface forces becomes equals that is s l a cos theta plus s l is equal to s s a where theta is the angle between liquid surface and the solid surface that is we can say that that this is the equation balanced equation and here we are the condition for wetness or uh, the droplets is given as that is if the tension between solid and liquid surface is greater than the tension between liquid and air thus we can say that theta will be in obtuse that is theta is an obtuse and it will not and it will not wet the surface but it is having an obtuse angle that is it is the case of leaf water interface then if the liquid surface tension is less than tension at the liquid air then it is we can say that theta is acute that is the case of plastic water interface in the case of obtuse that is if theta is obtuse there is only a minimum need of energy a minimum need of energy that is why liquid does not wet some solids because it need more energy to wet the solid that is why mercury does not wet any surface we know that mercury is always in a sphere shape where wherever or whatever the surface may be okay and another example is water on waxy surface is an example there also 
water forms sphere or drop in the shape of spheres that is it need extra energy to wet the surface that is in the shape of in the shape of sphere the liquid has minimum energy that is it tends to always in a shape of sphere but in some cases theta will be acute that is an extra energy is needed extra energy is needed for wetness or to wet a surface that is the case of plastic water interface this is the case when we are adding soap solution for example soap solution wet oil surfaces soap solution has an extra energy than water that is it wet the oil surface so we can say that the detergents and the dyeing substances are wetting agents why it is in the case of acute angle that is this the angle is in acute that is more energy is needed for the wetness when the detergent or dyeing substances added the angle of contact become small so that this may penetrate well and become effective that is why we use a soap solution to wet and penetrate into fibers having oiliness that is theta is the parameter which determines how a liquid behaves on the surface of a solid that is hydrophobic or hydrophilic now we are going to discuss a new topic that is drops and bubbles we all know that we studied what is surface tension and surface energy or the free surface of a liquid act as a stretched membrane or the tension on the free surface of a water acts like it tends to reduce the area of the surface also consider the uh, shapes this is a rectangular shape this is a sphere or this is a cube or this is a rectangle uh, can you say which shape has the lowest the lowest surface area when we calculate the surface area of these shapes that is in three dimension this is like a pyramid or it is like a sphere and it is like a cube and on calculating the surface area we find that the minimum surface area belongs to the shape sphere that is spherical shape have the lowest surface area that is why our liquid drops are in the shape of spheres are in the shape of spheres that is free liquid drops and bubbles are in spherical shape also the bubbles bubbles are also in the shape of a sphere because of the lowest surface area also we know that when surface area increases the energy also increases but we know that all systems in universe is tend to attain a lowest energy or the the systems in the universe is always having a lowest energy so the drop of liquid will be in a shape of lowest surface area in order to reduce the surface energy of this shape sphere has the least surface area that is it, it is applicable that is this is applicable only when gravity only when gravity and other forces 
other forces like air resistance are ineffective. This is a special case. When uh, gravity increases, the sphere shape will deviate from its shape. Okay, this is the first coin, coin's consequences of surface tension. That is, first consequences states about the shape or the minimum surface area of a free liquid surface. Second, we are going, uh, going to discuss the consequences of pressure. The pressure inside a spherical drop, drop of water, it is having a pressure P0 in the outer surface and inside it, it is having PI pressure. We can say that the pressure inside the drop is always greater than pressure outside the drop. Suppose we are having a having radius R and inside it, it is having pressure PI and outside it is having pressure PO. Now, I am going to increase the surface area by increasing a small distance or small radius delta R. That is, to increase the radius from R to delta R, we need some energy or we have to work to increase its shape. That is the extra energy. The extra energy stored in the surface is given by the work done is the surface energy per unit area. Okay. That is, we have extra delta R, also an extra surface area. We know that the surface area of sphere is given for pi R square. That is the extra energy, that is 4 pi, the new surface area becomes R plus delta R, the whole square. And the old surface area is 4 pi R square. This is the extra area that it, the energy will be SLA. This is the liquid air interface. Expanding, we get that is this R square plus 2R delta R plus delta R square minus 4 pi R square into SLA. We are cancelling this and we are neglecting this. Since, since delta R is very, very small, delta R square becomes 0. That is, we are having the H pi R delta R into SLA is the extra energy. This extra energy is, the, is used for the work done on the system. At equilibrium, we can say that work is force into distance. Can be defined as pressure into area into increased distance. That is pressure is the, we know that the pressure difference is Pi minus P0 here. And the area of sphere is 4 pi r square. And the distance we moved is the delta r. This is the equation number 2. Then this is the equation number 1. Since we know that comparing this, that is 1 equal to 2, we get pi minus p0, 4 pi r square, delta r is equal to 8 pi r delta r s l a cancelling the terms get the extra pressure p i minus p 0 is equal to 2 s l a by r this is the extra energy inside the liquid this is the consequence of surface tension consider the figures the first figure is a liquid drop. That is, it is a liquid drop. It is having a pressure P0 outside and Pi inside it. 
also this is p0 this is p0 then pi inside it in the case we know that pi is greater than p0 in general for a liquid gas interface the convex side has high pressure than concave side for example an air bubble inside the liquid that is considered the figure 2 it would have high pressure inside it that is this is the convex that is the liquid air interface that is a liquid gas interface the convex side has high pressure in the case of bubble in air it is having a two air surface inside the bubble it is air and also outside it is air since we have the equation pi minus p0 is equal to 2 s l a by r it is for the drop it is the case for a drop and having only one liquid one liquid gas interface but for a bubble but for a bubble it has two liquid gas interface that is this is the the bubble the film the film is the liquid and it is having an outside air contact and inside air contact thus the equation becomes pi minus p0 is equal to 2 times that of 2 sla by r that is given by 4 sla by r that is why we have to blow more pressure to form soap bubble in air that is the bubble has more pressure inside than a drop or a bubble inside the liquid